The Faith in the Last Days Articles by Brother John Thomas It was dark so that no natural light found place. This was where darkness had its place. Darkness and death. Darkness and stillness. But soon from within there would be movement. There would be life. And there would be light. This light of life would not have been witnessed before in the history of Earth. The first and only human was coming to life after being entombed, following his death, whose life now would never again experience death. A man by the name of Jesus, who had accepted a title of Lord and furthermore endorsed a recognition of him as an anointed king, whilst teaching people to see him simultaneously in a very unique way, not only as an anointed king, but as an anointed priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, was raised. Now, if you're hearing this address in the time in which we're giving it, you'll probably be aware that in this coming week, many around the world will, for a point in time, as is done annually, remember a raising of Jesus, or at least we'll hear that term as we come to probably the most sacred event in the Christian calendar of Easter. And earlier to that is another event that's occurring this week, tied in to that same one, which is the Jewish Passover, something that was occurring when Jesus himself died nearly 2,000 years ago or so. The Lord Jesus Christ was raised. Why did Jesus have to be raised? Before we go to answer this, we can answer the question straight away. We can provide the answer to that very question right here at the outset. But it won't be so much we as, as a, a people speaking this, providing that answer, but looking to this book, and this is a copy of the book, the Bible, which is what provides answers to such questions. The Bible is made up of two portions for the Christian people. There was the First Testament, what the Jews still call the Bible, which was then followed with the account of this man, the Lord Jesus Christ, in what has come, become known as the New Testament. And in the New Testament... There are a series of books around the message of Christ, known as the Gospel Records, followed by the Acts of those who followed him, known as the Acts of the Apostles, and finally a whole series of letters of followers, culminating in one very last letter by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. One of those letters is from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And in 1 Corinthians 15... The Bible provides the answer to this question, why did Jesus have to be raised? In verse 14 it says, And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty. And your faith is also empty. And then it goes on to reiterate in verse 17, And if Christ is not risen, your faith is is futile. You are still in your sins. The Bible is an ancient book. It was written in languages not the one that we're using today. It wasn't written in English. It was written in other languages. 
and over time it has come to be translated into languages such as English. The translation that I'm quoting from today, if that's of interest to you, is the New King James Version. But we don't want to leave the talk just with that answer. We want to understand how it gets to have that answer. What makes it important? Why it's worth understanding? Why it's even a question to be raised? Why did Jesus have to be raised? Who's asking? Well, the Christadelphians, as a professed Bible-based community, have posed this question for consideration, and you, having presented yourself here or online, have allowed this question to at least stimulate your own mind of inquiry. And that's not at all a bad thing. Sure, we professed Christians will have things to volunteer to share with you. We have quite a lot to talk on things that we believe relate to messaging from the Bible. But we wouldn't be unique in that. As enthusiastic as some of us may be in these efforts, our greater desire, the greater the desire than to just tell you lots of stuff, is to stir up that mind of inquiry, to pursue answers for yourself. Because regardless of how enthusiastic the speaker is or how big the congregation is, what matters much more is the conviction of each individual whose conviction has been achieved through personal inquiry. So what we share here today, or any who share via this site, is with a hope of not unquestioning acceptance, but rather a testing of the message, of pursuing further lines of inquiry, thereby personal conviction stands a better chance. So that's what we will encourage you to do today. Don't sit on just the message that you may hear, but pursue, test that message, inquire, find personal conviction. So today a question has been posed that relates to an individual by the name of Jesus and of an event relating to him, that of him being raised. I'm going to make the assumption that you've heard of Jesus, as I can't imagine where the interest would be in coming to hear something about this, to giving any attention. Why did Jerry have to be raised? Why did Yusuf? Or why did Rajiv or Pierre or Gustav or Hans? have to be raised. They probably won't generate much interest if the names don't stand out for you as standout characters. I think I'm safe to assume you are conscious that Jesus is a person of which the Bible speaks and is a person claimed to be pretty fundamental to the take-out messages of the Bible, which is something I concur with. That's Jesus. But what about the event, the raising of Jesus? What is even meant by that? And why, as indicated in the question, is it something to be considered as necessary? Why did Jesus have to be raised? Well, we'll come to this question by firstly clarifying what the raising is as an event. And I'm going to answer this directly by rephrasing it with a word that the Bible uses, resurrection, which I'll now proceed to share some definitions that I believe will underscore the significance of posing such a question as, why did Jesus have to be raised? In the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, it describes resurrection straight off as the rising of Christ from the dead. And it also goes on to say, the rising again to life of all the human dead before the final judgment, or 
the state of one risen from the dead. Now, I don't know about you, but in my feeling, that's not a known or common experience. But it is spoken of having happened to Jesus Christ. Today's address is why. One other definition, because I never like to leave it at just one, is Collins Dictionary, which you may have heard of too. It starts off to describe resurrection also in a very Christian light by saying, in Christian belief, the resurrection is the event in which Jesus Christ came back to life. Thank you.